On this week's episode of the Whistle Way podcast, Kyle and I sit down and we build out the perfect listing presentation. Whether you, if you don't have one now and you need to start one from scratch, or if you have one and it needs some tweaks, we talk about what you should include, the, the process, what you should not include, uh, how we lay ours out. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly on this week's episode of the Whistle Way podcast. Kyle, we've talked a lot about finding listings, finding buyers, working with agents, working with clients. Uh, we've talked about a lot on this podcast. Today, I want to dive in specifically on breaking down what does a listing presentation look like? What is does it look like to build the perfect listing presentation? I want to go into psychology. I want to go into what to include, what not to include, um, anything that and everything that someone that either is new to the business needs to know or... Um, maybe it has been in the business for a while and needs to refresh their listing presentation. Yeah, we've been on a few thousand listing presentations over the years, so I think we can definitely share some insight into what we do um, and maybe some things I've heard of other people doing that I think are either good or bad. I'll think oh. of some of those, yeah. Ooh, spicy. good and the bad. <laughs> cool. Welcome to the Whistle Way podcast. My name is Kyle Whistle with eXp Realty here in San Diego. And I'm Brian Kochi, Director of Marketing at Whistle Realty Group. The goal of the show is to give you the tools, techniques, and tactics. Go out there and crush it in your business. The way that we like to do that is to answer the questions that you have for us. So if you ever have a question you want to have us answer on a future episode of the show, you can always go to thewhistleway.com thewhistleway.com. Ask us questions on there. Subscribe to the podcast or YouTube channel. Join our private Facebook group or join our email newsletter where we share some tips and tricks and get on our referral list for all the people leaving California. Um, lastly, if you are looking to go deeper with your content creation strategy, we have a course called the Media Mayor Mastermind. We'll teach you all about shooting videos, podcasting, and all the other forms of media out there to help you grow your business and build your brand at thewhistleway.com. Let's roll. Let's go. So listing presentation. First off, what do you want to, let's talk about kind of the psychology. What is your goal and what do you want to cover in the listing presentation? I want them to sign the listing. Okay, next. <laughs> no, carry on. <laughs> um, I think, you know, the goal going in, sometimes people have this twisted. The primary goal is to effectively get the seller to do three things. Know you, like you, and trust you. Because if you don't have those, they're not going to work with you. So anytime you're going into a meeting with a potential seller, those should be your three primary objectives because if you don't accomplish those three, the probability of them choosing to work with you at the end of your um, presentation are very low. So I'm going in there with that. I think far too many people, the biggest mistake they make is going in there thinking about, I got to get a listing sign. I got to get a listing sign. And then you end up going in there and you just reek of commission breath. Like you just go in there and it's just like all you're thinking about is dollars and percentages the whole time when you should be thinking about the seller, their motivation, their timeline, right? You should be thinking about those things. And so um, if the agents who actually focus more on the relationship and, and do more active listening tend to be the most successful listing agents. The agents who go in there that, you know, downloaded some listing presentation from some website and they go in there and they're just like reading slides all day long. Um, especially the ones that are like five bullet points per slide and they're reading the bullet points, like you are going to lose. Like that is not going to be a winning strategy nine times out of 10. All right. So let's go right into that. That's a great segue. Did I already right talk enough shit about agents? Do you want me to keep going? No, no. I okay. like that a lot. Let's, let's go right into the slide deck because um, I want to talk about kind of how you structure it, what you include. Uh, you said some things there that I thought that would be, I could see how we can add in some stuff. Um, but what does the slide deck look like um, and what does it not look like? Yeah, so my personal opinion, I think every agent should have a presentation, whether that be via a slide deck, a physical book, um, or some sort of presentation. I think everybody should have a presentation of some sort. Um, if you go in to a, a meeting, there's going to be a seller who's going to ask you to provide them details on your step-by-step -step process or what makes you different, whatever. If you don't have anything to go to, I think you're going to be at a severe disadvantage. With that said, 50 plus percent of the time, I don't ever go to my presentation because I don't need it because I focus so much on the relationship that they're not concerned. They know me, like me, trust me. They don't need my presentation to accomplish any of those things and they're ready to move forward with me without it. But I found, especially the ones where I'm going in, I'm competing against somebody else um, or even more so on like an expired listing or a for sale by owner, like 
they tend to need to see the presentation more than if I'm going a sphere deal, um, a farm deal, things like that, especially your farm. Like they've seen all your marketing. They know what you do. They've, they've received your postcards. They've seen your ads. They've been to your open house, right? They've seen your community stuff. Like they don't need it as much. It's the cold appointment where there's no existing relationship. You weren't referred in. You cold called them. They're meeting you and five other agents. Like those are the ones where I find that you actually use the presentation more. With that said, we have a slide deck. We don't always pull the slide deck out physically, but we pull it out mentally. Um, so we tell our agents, and this is really interesting. I've been in rooms of hundreds, if not thousands of people, and I'll ask people, how often do you role play your presentations? And in majority of rooms, 95% of people don't role play their presentations at least once a week. 95%. I think that that's, number's low. I that, think it's higher than that. It's, I'm trying to be generous. <laughs> I'm trying to let like the five people who are, are listening right now feel good about themselves. Um, it's insane how few people practice this. Now, if I ask how many of you role play on the phone, it's like 50%. It's a higher number. But think about this. Like, how crazy is when you're at a conference, at an event, primarily to learn about like lead generation, right? Like that's usually how do I find and attract more clients? So you're spending all this time and money to like go to events to learn how to generate more leads. And then 50% of people are spending time figuring out like what to say to those leads when they come in. But only 5% are figuring out what to do when they sit at the kitchen table and it's time to give a presentation. How crazy is that disconnect? Like because 95% of agents are going to the event trying to figure out how to get more clients, but only 5% are practicing what they're gonna say when they sit down at the kitchen table, it's crazy to me. So on our team, we role play every single week that listing presentation and when we role play, we role play it with the slide deck. My goal is for the agents to get to be, um, there's a term, there's like this grid, right? It's like competent and conscious and you're either like consciously competent or consciously incompetent and you're unconsciously competent or unconsciously incompetent. The objective in business and in role playing is to get to the point where you're unconsciously competent, which means you don't even have to think about it. It just happens unconsciously, right? You're not thinking about it. It's happening in a competent manner. And the way that you get to establish unconscious competent is repetition. And the more you practice this, the better you're going to do when you go into a presentation and you don't even ever need the deck. You actually subconsciously or unconsciously delivered it. I think it's subconsciously. While it's, it's unconscious. You, it's unconscious company. You don't have to think about it. You deliver it subconsciously. So as you're going around the house, you're having conversations, you're literally giving the presentation. You don't even realize it. You're not even thinking about it. It's just happening because you've practiced it so much and you don't need the deck. And it, then if you even need the deck, I want my agents to be so good that they could go to like load their laptop, their tablet, whatever, and it won't load. And they don't even sweat for a second because they're like, oh, I got, I don't even need it. I got this. Um, that's where we want to get our agents to. So one of the things you said, you use the deck when you're going against usually a cold client. Um, it's most common, not always, but that's the yeah. most common time where I'd use it. Yeah. So they don't know, they, they don't, right, they don't want, know who know I you am. Like you trust you. Yeah. So they don't know you yet. One thing that we don't have in our slide deck, which I think might be interesting, and if you ever go to a conference, the person, the first slide that they have on their slide deck is like, this is my name, and then they have a picture of them and their family, and they have their their um, their qualifications. Do you like having a get to know me slash who I am slide in the slide deck? It's at the end. So in our deck, I don't want to go in there and start out bragging about me and who I am. I want to brag about how I'm gonna help them accomplish their goal. That's my focus. I come second to that. So I need to, right there again, we go to the saying that nobody knows, uh, nobody cares how much you know unless they know how much you care. So I need to show them that I care first before they care about who I am, right? So if I can come in there and help them realize how I'm going to get them from San Diego to Texas, so that they can be with their family, whatever, right? Like I've got to show them how I'm going to get them from here to there when they want to get there with the least amount of headaches possible, right? If that's what I've got to focus on, 
I don't, I'm not first. Most agents, yes, they will go in and the first thing they're going to show you is like why they're so great. But you're already at the table, right? Like I don't need to do that. I got the seat at the table. So I'm going to show them everything that I'm going to do for them. And then at the end, and you, you know exactly how we say this is, and, and you know what's, if you're meeting with other agents, what you're going to find is anybody can come in here and talk the talk and tell you they're going to do all these things to help you get your home sold. But the difference here is we not only talk the talk, we walk the walk as well. In fact, we've sold over 4,000 homes here in San Diego. We've been ranked the number one team in San Diego seven times. And not only have we sold thousands of homes, but the thing that we're more proud of is that we've had over a thousand people take the time to write a review about their experience working with us. And as cool as it is to sell 4,000 homes, a thousand reviews is more important to us because that is what we pride ourselves on is not only getting your home sold, but making sure that you have a great experience in the process. That's how we close it, right? That's where we talk about us. And that's all that we need. I don't think we need more than that. Cool. Um, all right. So now walk me through before we go, I don't want to do slide by slide, but before we build the kind of, um, presentation, talk a little bit about the, I don't want to use this word again, uh, but I will, the psychology of the slide you mentioned earlier, especially if you got five bullet points or paragraphs or right. Talk a little bit about what the slides should look like. Now, look, there's a lot of different ways you can do slides. Um, and do presentation, That's it's up to you. My preferred method is I do not want text heavy slides. The more text heavy your slides are, the more they pay attention to the slides and less attention they pay to you. I want them to pay attention to me, not the slide. So the slides that we utilize typically have one or two words and an image and that's it, nothing else. Um, it accomplishes a couple things there. One, um, it doesn't take the attention off of me, right? Because it's just, it's, you can only stare at the picture for so long, right? Like, and I'm gonna be talking. But if I'm talking and there's words, you're reading the words while I'm talking and you're not hearing what I'm saying. So that's why I don't like word heavy stuff. Um, also, I aim to reinforce the emotional response that I want out of somebody in the image that goes with the words. So when I put, um, you know, you know how we open it with the three P's talking about agents who put a sign in the yard, press enter on the MLS and then pray. Like I'm trying to get an emotion out of you and the image that we use, the imagery that we use can help encourage the emotion that I want them to experience. So that's my goal with slides is word image and the image drives them toward the emotional response that I'm looking for. Why did you stop when I was mid writing? I don't know why I'm <laughs> writing stuff down. I don't know why I it's write cool. notes. You're right. Um, it's fine. All right. Taking so notes. you're trying to be on top of it. Now we've got that. I like that a lot. We talked a little bit about the flow, but I want to go step by step now. We talk about we end with us. Mm -hmm. um, what does the first slide look like? What is the the first section? The second section? How do you go into that? And I love I love our kind of secret slash hidden slides. I want you to talk a little bit about those and, and that. That usage. Yeah. So we open, I, I kind of touched on it a minute ago, but we talk shit about other agents sub like, without talking shit about anybody specific, just agents in general. We talk about the three P's. If you're not familiar with them again, it's put a sign in the yard, press enter on the MLS, and then pray and wait for offers to fall from the sky. Like we always start talking about that because it, it just breaks the ice. You traditionally get a little bit of a chuckle out of them um, and help them realize that it takes more than that. Then we go into what it is we're going to do. Um, we've talked about this on a previous episode, but the thing that, that we found that's really effective is to um, name your processes in your business. If you don't give them names, they don't have as much significance. You can make these uh, processes that you have in your business much more significant when you just name them. So we have registered with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office the seven-day listing launch. And it details what do we do during this, the you know, seven-day period of getting a home on the market for sale. It was inspired by my buddy Dan, who has something similar, the five-day blitz. So we gave it a name and trademarked that process. And so we go into exactly what that process is, step by step. Here's the first day, this is what we're gonna do, the second day, day two, day three, day four. So we break down specifically what we're gonna do um, over a, a seven day period. Okay, so we do the intro, we break the ice, 
set kind of a, a barrier of like, this is what most people do, but we're going to do way more than that. Yep. We go into our process of this is exactly how we do more than that. This is why it's more than the three P's. Yep. Um, and then we have some guarantees. Yeah. Yeah, we do talk about a few things of like what make us different as well. So yep. hit on a few points of differentiation. So things that we know we do that the majority of other agents out there don't do. So we go process, points of differentiation. Then we go into guarantees. Um, I'm a big fan of Craig Proctor has some really cool, unique guarantees out there. Um, again, when you give things names, like most of you, if a seller called you and was like, Hey, I want to cancel this agreement. I'm not happy with things. It's not working out. Um, you know, I don't want to have be stuck with you for five more months. You would let them go. Hopefully. Hopefully. Now there are agents who won't. There are agents who are like, no, I'm holding your feet to the fire. Most agents, you would let them cancel. Maybe you call it a cancel anytime guarantee. And now it has some significance to it. But if you're not saying that, if you're willing to do that, why don't you say it and put it out there up front? Don't be a bitch and hide from it. Like put it out there up front and tell them like, hey, if you're not happy with me, we'll cancel anytime. Just give me a written notice. 72 hours, we'll cancel this thing. Like that shows confidence, but also makes them feel assured that, hey, if this doesn't work out, we have an out. The other thing that I hear when trying to build these guarantees is if your guarantee doesn't make you nervous, it's not compelling enough, which for Kyle, like he's like, yeah, let's make it nervous. And me, I'm like, no, I can't do that. And so basically anything makes me nervous in terms of guarantee. Um, but talk a little bit about like, because if you say, hey, I guarantee you, um, you know, I'll put it on the MLS. I'm not nervous about that. But that doesn't mean anything to anyone, right? So you, you have to make it attractive enough. And, and by doing well, that... You have to know. think about what are their concerns. Yeah. One of those is that, right? Like, I'm concerned that I only know you, right? I've only met with you for an hour. And now I'm trusting you with, like, the largest investment of my life. Like, what if it doesn't work out? You know that's a concern in the back of their head. You know they have a concern about how much you're going to sell their home for. So maybe you build a guarantee around that. Um they have concerns about like, what if we go under contract and the deal falls through? Like they have concerns about that. So think about what are the concerns that a home seller has in the home selling process and then build a guarantee or two or three around those concerns. And now you can hit their, address their pain points without them having to bring it up. And if you can make them feel uh, rest assured that these concerns of theirs are not concerns because you have guarantees around them, you're going to be way ahead of your competition. So how do you do that? Like go in chat GPT or Bard, right? And type in like, what are the 20 biggest concerns somebody has about the home selling process? And then pick two or three of those, figure out a guarantee that you can make around those things, give them name and incorporate those in your presentation. And they are also puts out a really cool home buying and home selling report. And uh, I keep forgetting. It's one of those things I showed up to Tom the other day, and I'm like, we should be referencing this every single time we do marketing and say, what are the concerns, or how do they, what what do they value most out of an agent, rather than just making shit up. Go, okay, look, the three things they value most makes up 50% of the value pie. Yeah, these are the three things we should talk about when we uh, do a listing presentation or do a buyer presentation. Yeah, and I think that's good. The the only thing with that is they only survey a few thousand people every year. It's not a huge sample size, right? Considering San Diego alone, there's thirty five to 40,000 transactions a year that happen. They're only surveying a few thousand people nationwide annually. Okay. So if only there was a technology that might scour the entire internet and give you a response in three Fine. seconds. You're right. Um, <laughs> so I would just, I'd rely, we have this cool technology. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, AI, but it, it's going to be very beneficial to you. Um, and I would lean on that heavily and uh, you could literally type it out and be like, Hey, if just ask chat GPT, like, Hey, I want, I, I see concern number three and I want to build a, uh, a find a way to help my client. I'm a real estate agent. I want to find a way to help my clients feel more confident that that's not a concern for them. I want to build a guarantee. Like you could probably prompt chat GPT or Bard to come up with these and be like, give me 10 options for a guarantee I could make to help sellers feel at ease like you could literally use ai to build this for you like well, you don't fine. need to be a genius anymore guys like the genius is at your fingertips um okay so we have um our, our process we have why us we have our guarantees 
And then we usually end it right about there, right? Then we go into the close with the reputation, okay. right? Yep. With our track record and our, you know, our track record of sales and reviews. And then we close. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? No. Cool. It's not that much. And you don't want to overwhelm people either. Like if it takes you an hour and a half, two hours to go through, like if you break your presentation out and it takes you an hour and a half, two hours, like you're screwed. Um, also, we don't always cover every slide in there. I ask, and this is a question you should all add to your pre-listing um, scripts, is ask a seller before you meet with them, what's most important to you about the agent you choose to represent you? I'm going to repeat that again. What's most important to you about the agent you choose to represent you? The seller is going to then tell you what's most important to them. So now if I go to my deck to do a presentation, I know where to add emphasis and I know where not to add emphasis. I also, because we've talked about using high note in the past, we send that out as a part of our pre-listing package. And I can tell a lot about the seller that I'm meeting with based on what parts of the high note they looked at. Did they focus on the market stats and the comps or did they focus on our reviews and our people, right? That's going to tell me a lot more about that seller too. So I know where to put more or less emphasis. So when I go in, I'm not delivering the presentation the same every single time. I'm delivering the presentation based on the person that I'm meeting with. Very cool. Anything else to add about building the perfect listing presentation? So then we'll go where you wanted to go, which is kind of the bonus slides. Okay. I, I was trying to lead you there and you stopped. And I was like, maybe that's just our secret sauce. And you don't want to share that. And no. I, I kind of freaked out for so a second. <laughs> we have um, probably five or 10 additional slides that we don't go to in every presentation, but we have them available if we need them. Right. So I don't want to make commission an objection. But if they use that objection, then I have the slides to support me, which we go into list to sales price ratio. We go into days on market comparisons. So I have that data that I'll go to if a seller is like, oh, well, so-and-so will do it for this percentage. I'll say, hey, that, that's cool. Um, but let me share some actual data with you based on the information from the MLS. Here's you know, the average agent in San Diego, here's what their average uh, sale price to list price ratio is versus ours. As you can see, you might be able to save yourself 1% on the commission going with, you know, average agent. But over here, we're going to get you two and a half percent more on the price. And Brian, at your price point of a million dollars, that two and a half percent, we're talking about an extra $25,000. So do you want to leave $25,000 on the table to save 10,000? No. Okay. So you can see why it's more important to go with the best agent for the job that's going to get you the most money possible, right? So we'll have those slides in there that we'll go to when we need them. We have slides about some of our like specific programs. We partner with Homelight and some others that offer kind of unique programs like a buy before you sell program and stuff like that. So we have some slides on that. Um, we also have our nationwide network. Yeah, we'll talk about, so obviously we talk on the podcast all the time about all the people leaving California, so we talk about how we can help connect them all over the country, all over the world really at this point with agents. So we have some additional slides that if we need them, we'll use them, but we don't want to go there every time because we don't need them. Um, but it's better to uh, have them and not need them than to need them and not have them, as uh, King Stallman used to say. Yeah. <laughs> that, I, I know the jingle. Yeah. Um, is that a nationwide thing or a San Diego thing? San Diego. Yeah. Um, very cool. And so I think one of the things that I, I would bet agents that are listening right now are guilty of is over-talking and overselling. And so what we did with those bonus slides is really try to prevent our team from having to spew out all that stuff. Sometimes people are ready to work with you in the first 10 minutes. And then after an hour and a half, like, I just want you to leave. And so having those as kind of bonus helps prevent us from, from overindulging on stuff that they've already made their decision. 100%. Cool. Yeah. So we go through that. Obviously, we'll, at that point, we'll look to um, get them to sign on the dotted line. There's going to be times they will. There's going to be times they won't. Um, where we like to go is we bring a – I know you want to talk about the whole presentation. So we bring a calendar um, a friend of mine, Eileen Rivera up in Long Beach taught me this is just, we go to the appointment with a calendar. And so we give the presentation and then I just start writing dates on a calendar and I say, all right, well, 
All right, all right so we're going to start and we're going to have our, our interior designer. Uh, I'm going to have her come out. I can get her scheduled to come out tomorrow. So we'll have her come out tomorrow. She's going to walk through the house, tell you everything you need to do to get the house ready. Um, do you guys feel confident that if she comes out tomorrow, you guys will be ready for photos on Monday? Okay, Monday photos. And then Brian and the guys are going to edit the photos, but we'll have it ready to go. But I'm literally starting to write in design console, photos, live, open house, right? Like I'm writing all this stuff. I just start writing it on the freaking calendar. And then like before they know it, like, all right, do these dates all make sense? Okay, great. All we need to do is just sign this. Um, so I, I go very assumptive, but people like to see that. They like to see it illustrated out of like what's happening and when. And that's a sales tactic. I know it's the um, assumptive sale, but there's also making small decisions leading into a big decision. At that point, they've already been like, well, I've already scheduled out the next three weeks. I'm, I'm already like, it's not a yes or a no. It's a, it's a, okay. Here we it's, go. It's the, this is the next step. So I love yeah. that a lot. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go into that if we, assuming we can get them to sign. Um, and again, you, you got to understand you're like, you're not going to get everybody to sign on the spot. There's going to be times where they need to talk it over. They got to meet with other people. They're a little ways out. So then it's a matter of like, what do you do? How do you handle that situation? So it's about like, what do you leave behind? Hopefully you role play some sort of, um, conversation about if they say they're going to meet with other agents, you might want to give them a list of questions they should ask that other agent. Um, questions that you know are going to help make you shine. So think about some of the things that you do that you know most other agents don't do to where if other agents got asked that question, it would stump them and put them in an uncomfortable position. So you want to do things like that. Um, so like for us, we know we have a huge team. Like I'm going to lean on that. And I would say, you know, when you're talking to another agent, you know, tell them to describe their team and who's going to be completing various tasks on their team. You know, what I would be concerned about if I was you, if I was meeting with an agent who said they're the one who's going to make the flyer and they're the one who's going to fill the flyer box and they're going to hang the lockbox. Like if they're spending all their time doing those tasks, are they going to have enough time to actually effectively market the home for you and negotiate the best deal? Like put start, you know, putting some things into their head that will cast seeds of doubt um, when they meet with that next person. So you want to do that. And then you want to have some good leave behinds. Um, if you're listening, you won't see this, but if you're on YouTube, we, we actually have a book that we put together. Uh, we use a company called authorify, like author, I F Y, um, authorify. They put this book together, how to sell your home for more money. I like to leave that book behind for the seller. If I can get them this book before the appointment, great. If I can't get it to them before the appointment, I'd to leave behind after the appointment. Um, a little like, here's one of my little, actually I could save this for my widget. So I you're going to have to stay tuned. I got a widget of the week, which is our thing we wrap the show with. That's like just a total game changer for something to leave behind at a listing appointment that really makes a big impact. So you'll have to stay till the end of the show. We don't normally do that, but today it just makes sense. So I'm not going to tell it to you now. You got to stay. I have no idea end. what you're talking about. Uh um, <laughs> But you also want to make sure you have some valuable stuff to leave behind. If, if you walk away from the appointment, there's no leave behind, like you really screwed up. Because the worst thing is when you go into a listing appointment and you see your competitor has like a folder on the table full of stuff and you realize like, you have a I don't card. have anything. Yeah, if that, I have a business card. And that person left them something of value, like they left them a freaking book that they wrote about selling their home and you have nothing. Like... That should help you realize like I might want to actually build not only my what do I give them before the presentation, but what do I give them after the presentation? So make sure that you're taking that into consideration. Um, I know we're tight on time, but you teased this earlier and I want to share. What are some things we shared a lot? Of, we shared all the good. This is what we do. This is what we recommend. This is why we do it. What should you not have in a listing presentation? What what have you heard that people do or you see and you go, I know I got that beat. Yeah, I mean, the biggest one we talked about, like in your deck, having a deck full of words, full of bullet points, stuff like that. I, I think that that's, that's a really big mistake. I think coming where your, your materials are not top notch, like you printed some crap out from home, it's crooked, you, the, the ink is running out because you're too cheap to buy a new ink cartridge, and like your ink is all blotchy. Like if you're, if you're going like that, if you're showing up late to the appointment, if you're not showing up dressed professionally to the appointment, um, if you're uh, rolling in there hot and sweaty, like that's not a good look. Like you want to roll in there exactly on time, dressed professionally with all your materials. Um, you really want to make sure that all that kind of stuff is dialed in. 
Um, you want to make sure to not – it's a delicate balancing act between talking shit about your competition and not talking shit about your competition. Like you never want to go at anybody and say direct negative things about – oh, don't hire – her she's this he's that like you heard how i said that earlier like you know if, if i was hiring somebody what would be concerning to me would be if i met with somebody and they said this or did that right like i'm not saying it directly about somebody but i'm saying it about them just in a much cleaner more professional manner um so make sure you're not going in there and, and talking shit about people like that they're gonna find that out now you might actually hurt your reputation too there's a few yeah, I like that. The other thing, the last thing that I want to add on, and this is something you've talked to our team about, um, is being prepared for, uh, especially if you're doing a slide deck, being prepared with your own backup internet or an offline version. So that way you don't walk in there and go, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? And they go, I don't know. And you go, and they tell it to you, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. Or it's like 72 digits on a sticker on the bottom <laughs> of a modem in the attic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so being prepared with having an offline version or having everything prepped uh, with a, a hotspot on your phone. So that way you're not going in there and spending the first five or 10 minutes setting up your station. That's never a good look. Oh, make sure you got like don't have holes in your socks. Because you're going to walk into some appointments and they're going to ask you to take your shoes off. Oh, at the bottom of your socks. I see. Yeah, like I, it's a little one. I'm just saying like make sure you got your, your uh, shoe, sock, foot game in, in order when you're going to these appointments. Because you should be going in asking if you should take your shoes off first thing when you walk through the door. Regardless if they have their shoes on or not, you should ask, would you like me to take my shoes off? And if you do, <laughs> make sure you're prepared for that. <laughs> uh, that could, you could literally kill an appointment right there. They your say yes, your big toe mind. is just <laughs> sticking out. <laughs> like, yes, you're not ready. They're going to be like, this guy can't even afford socks. Can you afford to mark in my home? Like, uh, that's not a good start. <laughs> are you rocking good socks today? Uh, always. I've got my Reptar socks on. <laughs> Proud of it. All right. Uh, that was good. Cool. Well, hopefully you guys got some value out of that. If you did, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button. Let YouTube know you enjoyed the show. If you got questions, throw them in the comment section. Brian and I personally respond to all of those. If you want more of our content on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. YouTube will take care of the rest. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure to subscribe to it. And if you enjoyed the episode, uh, hook us up with a review. Those mean a lot to us, and uh, they go a really long way in the uh, the algorithms. So that would be greatly appreciated. And before we wrap the show today, what we like to finish with is something we refer to as the whistle widget of the week, something that helps us save time, make more money, or just have a little bit more fun. What do you got, Brad? So I don't know. If you're listening to this, you'll have no idea. If you're watching this, you'll probably be very, especially longtime watchers. Uh, I'm not known around the office for having style. Um, I usually either... Uh, I just bought a bunch of shirts from Old Navy, and I like you know black or white or gray or blue, just like plain tees. Um, or I go to Amazon and buy the craziest stuff I can find. And so um, I never know what goes with what, and I don't want to spend time shopping, and I can't afford a personal shopper. I use a company called Stitch Fix, uh, and they curate a box of clothes for you at whatever interval you want. You can do monthly or quarterly or whatever. Um, and it's a great way to get... Uh, kind of some some outfits built together. You can say, I like this, I don't like this. Uh, both my wife and I use it, and it's a great way to get clothes once your stylist kind of gets to know you so you don't have to shop and find dumb stuff and that sort of stuff. More like super colorful button-up shirts with cats and tacos on them? Yeah, I'll wear one next week. Um, I love those shirts, but I'm like, I need something that's... Uh, <laughs> it's not all that crazy every time because if I go on a listing presentation ever. Yeah. <laughs> I, you you and I are similar sizes. I think the hard part is a guy like find something that fits your body type. We're both taller, long torso. Like once I find something, I'm like, oh, these built shirts work. Like I'll just buy a bunch of them in all the different colors. Like that's that's my style. Find something that fits your body right and then just buy a bunch of them. Yeah, I remember I was wearing something. And you go, did you get that from Stitch Fix? I go, yeah. You go, I have the same one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we probably have the same shopper there. Yeah. Uh, cool. The one I want to share, so this ties in. This is a great leave behind after a listing presentation. I don't have one because that wasn't where I was going to go with it, but it came to mind based on the topic. When you're getting ready to leave a listing presentation, assuming that the seller, whether they hired you or not, um, I always wait till I'm like walking to the door and then I pull it out of my bag and it's a book. This is assuming they have children, younger children. Typically there's a book called 
um, Berenstein Bears Moving Day. And this book is such a freaking game changer because when you break that book out and you're like, hey, I know sometimes with kids moving can be a little bit difficult on them. You know, we moved recently and my kids really enjoyed this book. And then you hand them that book like that humanizes you to such a level, like the amount of lift from that book being given If you're trying to find like a little degree of separation, you give that book and it has like stickers and little things in there for the kids and they can read it to them. And it's just the whole book is about like understanding what it's like to move and why people move. That book like just grabs the heartstrings and just tugs on them. Um, And it is a good book and it's valuable too. So when you give that, like that helps separate you from your competition so much. And I can't recommend that enough. And is that why some, is that why you wanted small, um, listing contracts so you can put it within the book. You just have it in the back page. Use and that as the as folder. They, they go, oh, what's this? Oh, go ahead and just sign that and we can get started. You can have this book. It's <laughs> an amazing. So just go on Amazon. They're like five or 10 bucks, buy a bunch of them and just keep them in your car. Have them in, my, in the trunk. Um, but those are great to give as a leave behind that just show them that you're human and, and you're recognizing it's a big decision and that decision is hard with kids. Um, so massive impact. Very good. Awesome. Well, hopefully you guys got a ton of value out of the show today. Again, I am Kyle Whistle with eXp Realty here in San Diego. I'm Brian Kochi. We'll see you next week. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I want to share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here. And don't forget to subscribe. Click right here.